This is me Akash for Vipin Sharma Biology Tutorials. Today I'm going to start with biodiversity conservation. So let's talk about the term conservation itself first. So conservation refers to your prevention of wasteful use of resources. That means for preventing this wasteful use of resources, we need to have a planned management of that natural resource. That is, we are not exploiting it, destructing it or neglecting that resource. So if you combine this term conservation with biodiversity, it becomes biodiversity conservation. That means we are preventing wasteful use of any of the life forms on the planet. And for that, we are not exploiting that resource, destructing or neglecting that biological resource. So this term breaks down into bio, uh, biodiversity conservation. Now the question is why we need to conserve this biodiversity. Definitely there are certain utility which this biodiversity is giving to us. So it's broken down into narrow utilitarian meaning that there are certain services that biodiversity give to us which have a direct economic benefit to man. Direct economic benefit to man. For example, if I talk about drugs, more than 25% of the drugs are derived from plants and uh, over 25,000 species of plants are used by natives for medicines. So this is an example which states that we are drawing uh, direct economic benefits from nature. That's why we need to conserve that. Further, it's into broadly utilitarian, meaning there are certain services which biodiversity gives to us, but that is not of direct economic importance to us. For example, if I talk about maintenance services, for example, oxygen. So oxygen balance, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus balance, the rainfall patterns, the seasonal, seasonal changes, all this is maintained by your biodiversity levels. If biodiversity is hampered, then all these activities will be hampered for sure. So biodiversity plays an important role in maintaining and sustaining supply of goods and services. So this comes under broadly utilitarian. For example, this example of Amazon forest, which contributes 20% of the total oxygen in the atmosphere of air. Further, there are further examples where, where in pollination of plants by providing pollinators. So these are certain sections which states that what are the utilities of this biodiversity and why we need to conserve it. Now the third point which comes into picture is ethical. So the word ethical means moral. Moral. So there are thousands of plants and organisms living out there on earth which are not at all completely useless. Yeah, it's true that they are not of economical benefit to it, but they have some intrinsic value. So for that we have a moral responsibility, a moral duty to ensure their well-being and they also have the right to live on earth as we are. So this is the third point which states which is ethical. So narrow utilitarian, broad utilitarian and ethical. These are the concerns why we conserve biodiversity. Now let's talk about certain key terms. The first key term is endemism. Okay, so let me take a color here. Okay, so this is an area. Okay, and species A lives in this area. The point to be noted is that species A lives in this area only not anywhere else on this planet. So this species is endemic. Okay. So endemism is a ecological state of species being unique to a defined geographical location. Being unique is the key term to a defined geographical location. In case if the species A is present anywhere else on this planet, it will not be considered, considered as endemic. Okay. So this is what the second point says. Now other points are like hotspots okay so there are certain areas in the planet certain areas which uh, have significant levels of biodiversity so they need to be con uh, conserved for this sake as the biodiversity levels out there are high and their services which that biodiversity offers to us is high so that's why we need to conserve that Further, the thing is like they have high uh, vulnerability of their habitats and high irreplaceability. That means in case if we lose them once, it's very difficult to regain them back. So at the first instance only, it's our responsibility to conserve those areas first. Further, this one offers essential ecosystem services. This ecosystem services which these hotspots offer is much more higher as the diversity levels, the stability levels is much more higher. That's why we need to conserve this area a lot. Now let's talk about uh, two major conservation strategies that is in situ conservation and ex situ conservation. In situ conservation says on site and ex situ as the word suggests says off sites. 
so imagine this is an area and it has its own flora and fauna okay so you need to protect it so in case of in in situ conservation you will monitor this area you will care for this area see if the balance is maintained or not all the microbes or plants flora fauna everything living in this area do, is not threatened at all uh, all these things will you uh, you will do in the natural habitat you are not removing it anywhere else you are taking care at that area only so it comes into on site conservation now take a second example where in order to conserve this flora fauna or microbial species you are taking this to different area and then different area in which you are taking is man made and it is a copy it's a it imitates the natural habitat okay so in this scene is called off site so conserving at that point only that place only is called on site that means in situ conservation and taking it to other area and the other area is man made and inhibits the natural habitat then it's called ex situ conservation so the examples of it are national parks and wildlife sanctuaries then examples of ex situ becomes uh, your zoo and aquarium okay so that's kind of it for this video and we are going to discuss about national parks wildlife sanctuaries all this area the differences between them all this in the question section of ncert back questions that's it so thanks for watching vipin sharma biology tutorials thank you